In this video, we'll take a look at how a portal frame is modeled, analyzed, and designed in Risa 3D. So we'll start here with just the simple drawing grid. If I look at our drawing tools here, we can see uh, the drawing grid set up. We can see that we have 30 equal spaces at one foot a piece in both the X and the Y direction. Now we could change that spacing. We could also change the drawing or uh, grid origins. But in this case, we're gonna stick with this one by one grid. Next thing I'm gonna do is set up section sets. So section sets are simply just created to allow us to kind of group the design of, of similar members together. And so under hot rolled, we're gonna go ahead and create a few section sets. The first one I'm gonna create is a column section set. And we'll assign a particular shape with that. I'm gonna choose in the database a 12 by 30 and click okay. Now in this case, I need to change the type. So I'll change the type to column. I'll change the design list. And so again, I can create my own design list. So grab available shapes and add them to a current design list. Or I can just choose from my drop down here. So I'm gonna just choose our wide flange database. Next, I can choose a material and a design rule will keep those the same. Now next, I'm gonna go ahead and click enter and then I'm going to add a beam to our section sets. Again, I wanna choose a shape in this case, so I'm gonna go ahead and make it a 10 by 19. So let's just choose that from the database and click OK. Now again, I need to choose the appropriate type. So in this case, I'll choose beam. And then the design list, the material, and the design rule are all gonna be the same. Now we do have other section sets for different materials. So you can set up various section sets uh, depending on if you have more materials in the model, but in this case, we'll just stick with these hot rolled shapes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and model. So I can go back to my home tab and choose the member input tool. Now when I do that, I wanna make sure that I select uh, the appropriate member to start modeling with. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and set the section set and we'll choose the column section set. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw that column from a zero, zero point up to zero 014. And so that's the first column there. While I'm drawing, I'm just gonna go ahead and disable the, after I draw these columns, I'm just gonna go ahead and disable the rendering as well. So I'll go ahead and finish the column modeling. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the rendering here. Now I'm gonna go back to members. I'm gonna go ahead and model in the beams now. So I'm gonna choose that beam section set. And we'll go ahead and make the beams. So I'm gonna go from the top of the column here and we'll go to We'll go to that point uh, just maybe 18 feet above at the center, uh, which is 15 feet in the horizontal. And we can go ahead and connect back to the top right hand uh, column and we have our portal frame. The next thing we need to do is we need to add boundary conditions. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the boundary conditions button and I'm gonna choose to add uh, fixed boundary conditions in this case. Now when the boundary conditions properties open up, I can choose that I wanna to click to apply and I'm just gonna go ahead and choose a box to highlight those two uh, nodes and apply those fixed boundary conditions. Now there are other, are other options here. We can, as we, as we saw here, make our choose from a fixed or a pinned or a roller boundary condition, or we have full kind of uh, variability to change uh, any of the six degrees of freedom in any way we want. If we open up the dialogue here, we can see we make any degree of freedom, either free or fixed or uh, spring. We can add a, a compression spring or a tension spring. All of those things are possible for any of the, the degrees of freedom. Next, I'm gonna go back to the home and, and like we saw before, I can, I can go ahead and render the model or I can go ahead and look at a color coding. This color coding shows us um, just kind of based on a section set, you know, the beams and columns. So for a larger model, this is a great way to group members and, and show that grouping um, graphically. Next, let's go ahead and add loads and load cases. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on basic load cases. And we need to establish our basic load cases. So I'll first establish our dead load basic load case and assign it a category. I also want to include the gravity load here. And then I'm going to assign the live load. And again, we'll go ahead and maybe this case, since it's going to be a roof load, we'll call it a roof live load. Now with our basic load cases applied, I can go ahead and actually create those basic load case, or I can go to actually go ahead and create those loads. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add some line loads on the model. So if I click line loads, I can choose the direction here. So I'm gonna do a vertical Y direction. And I'm gonna to choose to go ahead and say, uh, how about a negative 200 pounds per linear foot? And we'll do the same thing here. And I can go ahead and click to apply and choose those roof beams. Next, I can go ahead and 
apply our uh, live load. So if I go ahead and switch then to live load here, maybe I want to apply this load in the local axis. So the local Y axis is that lowercase y. I can go ahead and make this, I don't know, 150 pounds a linear foot. And again, apply that live load here to those roof beams. Now in this case, maybe I, I wanted to add an additional load and I forgot I could either go back to the basic load cases or I can always access the basic load cases directly from the data entry tab in the Explorer. So let's go ahead and add in our wind case here and I'll choose our category to be wind. And then with that done, I can go ahead and actually add maybe a, a point load um, to our, our, our portal frame here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a nodal load and so we'll add a nodal load at this top node here. And so we'll call it a node, we'll call it a direction, make it X. And we want that basic load case to be that wind and we'll choose a five kit magnitude, click to apply and choose the node that we wanna apply it to. Now, what if we wanted to make changes here? Maybe we've modeled things you know, incorrectly or we needed to make a change. We can always do that by simply selecting members. So if I just go ahead and select in, for instance, these columns, I can come into the properties panel and start to make a change. So in this case, since I have the section set applied, I can't individually make a change to those particular columns. I'd actually have to go back into the section set and I'd go ahead and change the column size itself. So if I come here, I can actually just change the column size to maybe a 12 by 35 in this case. I can do the same thing with loads. So if I enable the visibility of my loads and I go to my dead load, I can actually select my, I can actually select my loads here. So I'm just going to hold control to select both of those loads and change that magnitude to maybe hundred pounds a linear foot. Now when I'm ready, I can also add load combinations. So if I open the load combinations tab, We'll see the load combinations interface. We don't have any load combinations quite yet. It's possible to manually create our own load combinations just by clicking in the interface. But in this case, I wanna use the load combination generator. And so the generator gives us tabs for gravity, wind, and seismic, allows us to create combinations based on the code from all, of all those different types. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and generate both gravity codes or gravity combinations for strength. So I can click generate. And then I can generate some wind combinations for strength as well. Now I'm not gonna generate any seismic combinations because we don't have any seismic load, so I'll just close out of this. Now one thing you'll notice here is that it also did generate some deflection combinations basically for serviceability. So if we switch to the design tab, we can see the different uh, combinations that are gonna be used for various design of materials. So in this case, for, uh, for instance, hot rolled, we're going to use um, all the combinations and for serviceability, we're gonna use those three dead, dead plus live, dead plus wind combinations that we have there. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of my load combinations and we can go ahead and run our analysis. So I can either go back to the home tab or up here in kind of the quick buttons, I can click the solve button. I'm gonna go ahead and choose our batch solution and click solve. Now the batch solution is gonna give us both the individual load combination solution. So it's gonna solve individual load combinations and we're gonna be able to review results, whether graphically or in a table for individual load combinations. And it's also gonna give us the envelope. So the full envelope that's gonna give us kind of the worst case uh, result for um, any given member in, in, in this project. So with the analysis now complete, I can go ahead and close out of this node spreadsheet. And then the first thing I can do is maybe go ahead and look at um, our, our kind of deflected shape. I'm gonna turn our wireframe back to its regular state and we can see our deflected shape. And we can look through kind of some of our, our deflection options or some of our load cases or combinations to see what we want. We can also switch through like basic load cases so I can go ahead and see, hey, maybe I just wanna look at the deflected shape for um, you know something uh, some other combination or I can choose any combination that I want to go ahead and look at that deflected shape. I can also go ahead and look at like joint reactions. So if I click on joint reactions, I can turn on the, let's say Y and X joint reactions. And so we can see those, those joint reactions available to us. 
The next thing that we can do is we can go ahead and look at member forces. So let's turn on those member forces. Maybe our strong axis bending. So we can see our strong axis bending here. You'll notice that there's no magnitudes. I can actually go into my view options and choose results. And in the results option for members, I can choose to enable my magnitudes and turn those on so we can see the magnitudes of those moments, for instance. Now we can also go ahead and look at our design results. So if I open my design results spreadsheet, we'll see the design results for all the given members here. So just these four uh, columns and beams, we'll see that the code checks, we're not really having any issues, we're passing in the code check. We can actually go ahead and look at the detailed report by right clicking and clicking detailed report. We'll see a detailed report for, in this instance, um, one of the, the beam members in this portal frame. And what's really nice about the, the detail reports in Risa 3D are the level of detail for each limit state that are applied. So we can go ahead and see all the input data, material properties, shape properties, all the diagrams that show all of our forces and moments, and then each individual code check. So if we wanted to go see maybe the worst case here, we've got this interaction between bending and axial. We can see exactly where those uh, numbers are coming from, what are our, our design numbers, what are our allowable numbers, and then also the final equation from the steel manual for the check. Now, additionally, we can go ahead and close this out. And if we wanted to, we can look at our suggested design. This is actually going to be kind of what Risa is going to suggest uh, as the suggested shapes uh, based on a strength criteria in this case. Now, we probably don't want to change both of these shapes to a six by 15, but this is the, the suggested shape that Risa is going to do, basically doing an optimization in the background and saying, hey, if you want to, you can update these shapes and Risa 3D will then rerun the analysis, allowing you to review the design based on the suggested shapes, therefore completing your design. For more information about Risa 3D, please visit risa.com.